So with DynamoDB, it replicates your database across three regions onto three separate hard drives. Uh, and this allows for high availability. So uh, you don't have data loss, but this comes, off, uh, comes with a trade off because when you need to update your data, uh, it's going to have to write updates to all those copies. And it's possible for data to be inconsistent when reading from a copy which has yet to be updated. So um, the way you work around this is with choosing your read consistency. With DynamoDB, you can choose between two options. You can choose eventual consistent reads, which is the default, or strongly consistent reads. So let's talk about eventual consistent reads first. So when copies are being updated, it is possible for you to read and be returned an inconsistent copy. Okay, because, uh, the, uh, because you're reading from a database which has yet to be updated. Um, but reads are super fast because you're not waiting uh, for data to become consistent. So you could read it immediately, but there's no guarantee of consistency. Um, now, the time it takes for everything to become consistent is, a, is around a second. So if you're building an application and you can wait up to a second after a read, that's how you would ensure that your data is up to date. Or maybe you have an application where it being consistent isn't a, a deal breaker, so it doesn't really matter. Now, if consistency is extremely important to you, this is where strongly consistent reads are going to come into play. So this is when copies are being updated and you attempt to read it, but it's not going to return it unless all the copies are consistent. So the trade-off here is you're going to have a, a guarantee of consistency. It's always going to be uh, consistent, but you're going to have to wait longer for that, um, that read to come back to you. So it's going to be a slower read. Um, and all copies will be consistent within a second. So that's a guarantee that AWS gives you. So there you go. That's reconsistencies.